My reading for today is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. And we hear from David Suchet as he reads the passage for us. People were bringing little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Truly I tell you, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And he took the children in his arms, placed his hands on them and blessed them. It was quite natural that Jewish mothers should wish that their children be blessed by a great and distinguished rabbi. And especially they brought their children to such a person on their first birthday. It was in this way that they brought the children to Jesus on this day. And we will fully understand the almost poignant beauty of this passage only if we remember when it happened. Jesus was on his way to the cross, and he knew it. Its cruel shadow could never have been far from his mind. And it was at such a time that he had time for children. Even with such a tension in his mind as that, he had time to take them in his arms, and he had the heart to smile into their faces and maybe even to play with them a little while. Now, the disciples were not boorish and ungracious men. They simply wanted to protect Jesus. Remember, they did not quite know what was going on, but they knew quite clearly that a difficult time lay ahead, and they could see the tension under which Jesus labored. And so they didn't want him to be bothered. Not to make excuses for them, but how could they conceive that Jesus could even want children about him at such a time as that? But Jesus said, let the children come to me. My friends, as followers of the Christ, it's important for us to glean as much as we can from this incident. Because this moment tells us a great deal about Jesus. It tells us that he was the kind of person who cared for children and for whom children cared. He couldn't have been a stern and gloomy and joyless person. There must have been a kindly sunshine around him. He must have smiled easily and laughed joyously. George MacDonald, a Scottish author, poet and Christian congregational minister, says that he does not believe in a man's Christianity if the children are never to be found playing around his door. This precious incident throws a floodlight on the human kind of person that Jesus was. And Jesus said, of such is the kingdom of God. So what is it about the child that Jesus liked and valued so much? Firstly, there is the child's humility. There is the child who is an exhibitionist, but such a child is rare and almost always the product of misguided adult treatment. Ordinarily, the child is embarrassed by prominence and publicity. He has not yet learned to think in terms of place and pride and prestige. He has not yet learned to discover the importance of himself. Secondly, there is the child's obedience. True, a child is often disobedient, but paradox though it may seem, his natural instinct is to obey. He has not yet learned the pride and the false independence which separate a man from his fellow men and from God. Thirdly, there is the child's trust, and that is seen in two ways. It is seen in the child's acceptance of authority, and there is a time we know when a child thinks that his father knows everything and that his father is always right. And, to our shame, he soon grows out of that. 
but instinctively the child realizes his own ignorance and his own helplessness and trusts the one who, as he thinks, knows. And also, it is seen in the child's confidence in other people. He doesn't expect any person to be bad. He will make friends with a perfect stranger. A great man once said that the greatest compliment ever paid to him was when a little boy came up to him, a complete stranger, and asked him to tie his shoelace. The child has not yet learned to suspect the world. He still believes the best about others. Sometimes that very trust leads him into danger, for there are those who are totally unworthy of it and who abuse it. But that trust is a lovely thing. And fourthly, the child has a short memory. He has not yet learned to bear grudges and nourish bitterness. Even when he is unjustly treated, and who among us is not sometimes unjust to his children. They forget, and they forget so completely that they do not even need to forgive. And so we have humility, obedience, trust, and forgiveness. These are the hallmarks of Christian character and virtue, as Jesus said, for of such is the kingdom of God. I'd like us to look a little further into these virtues. Humility. My friend, I went to our annual church synod recently. and The gathering of our church's ministers and lay leadership. I was surprised by what I saw and heard. I saw a lot of jockeying for positions and I heard a lot of conversations and speeches that had an underlying appeal that says, look at me, listen to me. My friends, it even happens in the local church. It's amazing to me that God never created us this way. As children, we didn't start out this way, but we've learned the way of the world. Christ needs humble followers. The area of obedience Let's be honest with ourselves. This is one of the hardest virtues to attain. We see everywhere in our society today, corruption and theft are rampant. The simple things like traffic rules and paying of TV licenses seem to so many an option to do or not. Now, my friends, God doesn't want us to be walking automatons blindly following every whim of authority. After all, that's the reason he gave us the gift of free will and the freedom to choose. But how can we live disobedient lives and expect God to bless us? In the area of trust, this also is a virtue that seems tenuous at best. So let me ask you this. Do you trust God to do the best for you? Invariably, you'll say yes, because he's omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. He knows all things, he's all-powerful, and is present in all circumstances. But, yes, there's always a but, isn't there? Do you trust him enough with your situation? which means can you, will you leave everything, even the outcome, to him? Do you trust him enough for that? And forgiveness. My friend, I believe this is the pinnacle of all Christian virtues alongside that of love. I have a little three-year-old grandson, and I confess that he is the apple of my eye. Now I watch him at play. And he loves his opa's garage, especially the tools, the leaf blower, the hose pipe. He's always helping his opa and going to fix something. Now remember, and here's the point, he's only three years old. Do you think anything he works on is going to work? No, of course not. Has he broken some things? For sure he has. Why? Because he's three years old. 
he doesn't know any better. Now let me expand the point. Do you remember when Jesus had taken all our sins upon himself while hanging on the cross? And he saw people getting it all wrong. What did he say? Luke tells us in chapter 23, verse 34, Jesus said, Father, forgive them. for They do not know what they are doing. Yes. Humility, obedience, trust, and forgiveness. Indeed, of such is the kingdom of God. God bless you.